Hi, I'm Dave Volick with the Bella Group. Welcome to my weekly real estate market update. This is the first week of the month, so we're going to be doing a deep dive into the Connecticut real estate data. So let's jump right into that. This first chart is 2018 to 2021 uh, real estate market data by month, with January of 22 shown in there as well. And the orange bars are for sales per month. Green is um, pending sales. Blue is new listings per month and purple is closings per month. The big takeaway on this chart is the orange bars are in a steep decline, which is the number of houses for sale. If you're a buyer, you've seen this. Going into this next chart, this is the last six months. Instead of looking at the last four years, the last six months, you can see the orange bars, which are the homes for sale, are still in a steep decline. The important point is over the last four months, the purple bars, which are number of houses closed, Versus the blue bars, the purple bars are higher. So closings are outstripping new listings. So that's driving part of this reduction in the, the number of houses available for sale. Sellers, this, there's little to no competition for you. This is a great opportunity to get into the market and get a, a high price for your home. If you're interested in selling, now is a great time to reach out to me and, and we'll talk about it. Buyers, a lot of competition. There are ways to succeed, there are ways to win, but you gotta have the right person on your team. Give me a call, let's talk about it. So what's driving this lack of inventory, these orange bars driving down? We've seen that they're, right now we're selling more homes than we're listing. But this, this um, article is, is interesting. It shows early data shows Connecticut housing production dropped to decade low in 2021. So what they're talking about here is uh, pre-2007, we were building about 9,400 houses a year. In 2019, it was about 5,800. 2020, it was 5,400. 2021, we're only at 3,335. Now, that's only 11 months of data, and it's preliminary data. So I do expect that to go up, but it is a pretty low number. The, uh, the link to that article will be in the description. Uh, so let's look at a chart of the data since 1990. And you can see, I've shown this before. But 1990 to about 2007, ranging from 8,000 to 12,000, with an average about 9,400 homes per year. Uh, 2007, 2008, everything crashed uh, with the housing market, and we dropped down well below to about half of what we were at before. You can see the red bar, which is the estimated 2021 11, first 11 months data, about 3,300. We're even below that. So the, the takeaway here is, the lack of new construction over the last 10 to 15 years had a major impact on the number of houses available today to sell. Although we should see more homes come on the market as spring approaches, I expect to see the seller's market continue until new construction starts to close the gap. So the final thing I want to talk about is mortgage rates. So let's take a look at that. This chart is showing February 3rd, which is yesterday, that Freddie Mac had the mortgage rates as 3.55%. If you look just below it, January 27th was 3.55% as well. So mortgage rates are unchanged week over week. We do expect to see, and, and forecasts are calling for, mortgage rates to climb into the high threes, maybe even up to 4% by the end of the year. So there, there's going to be some impact uh, for buyers. This chart is for reference only. The best way to know what your payment would be based on your financial situation is to talk to a lender. And this is principal and interest only. It doesn't take into account taxes and insurance. But you can see that the payments vary significantly based on interest rates and the amount of the loan. I'll have a link to this in the description as well so you can study it and take a look at it in a little bit more detail. A couple of points that I want to make on this. The first is that mortgage rates, even though they're going up a little bit, are still at historic lows. If you look in 2018, the mortgage rates were in the 4 to 5% range. If you look over the last 50 years, the average was closer to 7 or 8%. So 3.55% is still a pretty low rate. And I saw this on Facebook today and I'm stealing it. The, rent, the interest rate for rent is 100%. You're not getting any value beyond being able to live in your apartment when you're paying rent. The landlord is. If you buy a house and you're paying a mortgage every month, every month you're building a little bit of equity. So there's a lot of value in, in that as well. So if you found anything of any interest, please click the like button. Uh, and also, if you'd like to see more content like this as I put out weekly, 
uh, subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. Any comments or questions, please put them down in the, in the comment section below. There'll be a link to my winter buyers and sellers guide. No obligation for that. No email or anything like that. You can just click it and, and download it. Uh, I appreciate you joining me. Have a great day. Thank you.